Two years ago, on July 4th, 2019, I had the opportunity and the honor to speak at the citizenship ceremony for 20 first-generation immigrants at the Saratoga Battlefield at the Saratoga National Historical Park in upstate New York. I talked about my own journey to the United States, what becoming a U.S. citizen means to me, and exactly why this country is so special to me and millions of other immigrants who have come here. This is my personal story in my own words, and I hope you find it interesting. Thank you. I was 12 years old when I immigrated to this country with my parents. I still remember that day like it was yesterday. It was September 1st, 1995. We just landed in JFK, and I remember walking out onto the tarmac, and I remember how different everything looked to me. It was so foreign. Everything looked different, smelled different, and sounded different. I remember the rush of emotions that I felt when I first got here. I felt anxious, nervous, excited, and hopeful all at once. I didn't really know what this new world held in store for me. And my parents didn't know what it held in store for them either. See, they took a leap of faith. We said goodbye to all of our friends and relatives who stayed behind. We sold everything that we owned. Everything that we had with us was in four suitcases filled with clothes and photos. The reason my parents chose to leave their home is so basic, it's almost cliche. But it's true. They were looking for their American dream. They wanted me to have opportunities that I would have never had in Belarus, the country where I was born. See, in 1995, Belarus was four years removed from its independence from the Soviet Union. It was supposed to be a democracy, but that was a lie. It was only a democracy in name. In reality, it was an authoritarian regime controlled by the same head of state for the last 25 years. 80% of its economy is controlled by the government. 80% of its banking system is controlled by the government. It has no independent media and individual financial mobility is impossible. Individual freedom only exists so long as it does not threaten the state. And of course, there is the ever-present danger of nuclear radiation from the now infamous Chernobyl, which sits just 80 miles from my hometown. For all these reasons, my parents decided to join some of my family who had immigrated a few years earlier and make the long journey here. We first traveled from Gomel to Moscow, 350 miles, by car, by train, and taxi. And we boarded a plane, a direct flight from there to JFK, which took us about 12 hours. And then we were picked up by one of my dad's distant cousins in New York City. He first took us to Brooklyn, to his apartment, and then later that day, drove us to Schenectady, where my aunt and uncle had settled. By the time we got to their house, it was almost midnight. We were tired and hungry, and I remember my parents bringing in the suitcases, and I remember my uncle saying to them, let's go get groceries so that you guys can have a proper meal the next day. And I remember how confused my parents looked at him. They said, groceries in the middle of the night? <laughs> he smiled back at them, and he said, are you kidding, right? This is America. Price Chopper is open 24-7. <laughs> so we did. We went to Price Chopper. The place seemed absolutely huge to me. There were very few people there, but of course, there wouldn't be at that hour. And what I remember most was not the lack of people in the store, but the rows and rows of shelves stocked with food. I've never seen so much food in my life. See, in Belarus, food was not always easy to come by. By 1995, Belarus had been in turmoil for the last four years since the collapse of the Soviet Union. There were shortages of food, clothes, and other goods. But even when the Soviet Union was still around, staples like bread and milk required lines and hours of wait. And I remember my mother asking me to go pick up bread at the local bakery and standing in line for an hour or two the entire time, hoping that by the time I got to the counter, there would still be some left to bring home. See, this was our reality for years. So when we were in that price shopper that night, the first night in America, that seemed like a fairy tale. 
Within days of coming here, my parents started looking for work, and I started eighth grade. We didn't speak English, and there was not a single person who spoke Russian in my school. Not the teachers, not the other students, no one. It was tough, to say the least. My parents had very little money. They had no high place connections. They had no outside help. Their college degrees didn't count here, and they had to start from the bottom. My mom worked to clean houses for wealthier people here, and my dad picked up odd jobs here and there until he could learn enough English so he could get his driver's license. And when he did, he bought a $300 beat-up Honda and began delivering pizzas for a local pizza shop in Schenectady. Despite these challenges, my family slowly and incrementally made progress. My parents eventually got better jobs. I graduated high school, got a college degree, and ended up going to law school and becoming a lawyer. I've been practicing law in Albany now for the last nine years. I've been able to afford things and have experiences that I would have never had if my parents had not brought me here. But why am I telling you all this? It's not to make you feel sorry for the hardships that we had early on, and it's not to brag about my current success. Rather, I'm telling you this to hopefully make you feel inspired and hopeful. Yes, it was hard. We had no choice but to make things work. But we were able to do it because we were here. We were in this country. Because this country is special. This country is like no other place on earth. Despite what politicians and talking heads on TV tell you. We're not going to make America great again. It was never that great. <laughs> America is the place where people want to come. Why? Because this country... because this country was founded on the best ideas that humanity has yet to come up with. And they were not communism, or socialism, or democratic socialism, whatever that is. They were the ideas that you own your own labor, that your time and efforts belong to you and not the government. They are the ideas that allow a 12-year-old kid who did not speak English, did not have a trust fund or wealthy parents, to become successful and to live a free life that his peers in Belarus could only dream about. They are the ideas of freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, and freedom of religion. They are the ideas that allow for freedom of opportunity. Is America perfect? Of course not. Are there racist, sexist, and bigots in this country? Yes, there are. But do they define America? Do they define all of us? No, they don't. They never have, and they never will. None of us starts in the same place in life. We all have different skills and abilities and capabilities. Equality of outcome is not guaranteed in America. Nor do I think that it should be. Because the moment the government starts defining outcomes is the moment it starts placing limits on individual freedom. It starts looking more like Belarus rather than the United States. Equality of opportunity is what this country is built on. It is guaranteed by our Constitution and it is what thousands of Americans have given their lives to protect. Freedom of opportunity is what makes this country special. It is available to each and every one of us. If we work hard, if we take a leap of faith, we will end in a place far ahead of where we started. Irrespective of our national origin, our race, our religion, our gender, or sexual orientation, we can succeed in America. And that's all that anyone could really ask for. And today, it is my honor and my privilege to recognize 20 new citizens and to tell them as immigrant to an immigrant, welcome home and let's succeed together. Thank you. There's been way too much undeserved criticism thrown at our country by people who are either ignorant of or are intentionally deceitful about the fact that the standard and the quality of life in the rest of the world is significantly worse than it is here. The truth is, even the poorest Americans are significantly better off than most average people in most of the other parts of the world. I hope that this video fills you with optimism that no matter who you are, where you come from, or what obstacles stand in your way, you really can succeed in America. If you agree, please hit the like button and share this video with a friend to remind them that this place, the United States of America, truly is the best country on earth. 
Thanks for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Take care.